Behind the roar of a racetrack crowd rings the anvil chorus of Americans at Work, protecting the feet of thoroughbred racehorses with the emblem of good luck, the horseshoe. At the track, the race is to the swift and the well shod. As every winner needs a good jockey, so does he need a good horseshoe. The horse farm. This is the beginning of racing and of the close relationship of horses and men. <laughs> Thoroughbred racehorses are frolicsome, high-spirited steeds. They are bred to run. Over the farm's well-turfed hills, they romp without shoes until they're ready for training. But long before then, they've come to know a man who will be a familiar figure to them as long as they live, the horseshoer. When a foot grows too long, the shoer must trim away dead tissue. This way, the yearling's feet stay healthy and strong. The shoer at a farm has responsibility not only to the horses under his care, but to the shoers at the track, members of his union. The way a horse is treated here determines his reaction to every shoer he meets the rest of his life. The horse's first shoes are custom built for him from bars of steel. When the metal is white hot, it's ready for bending into shape. Later at the track, a thoroughbred will wear ready-made shoes. One of the basic requirements for the union smith is that he must be able to build a shoe, starting from scratch with a bar of steel. The blacksmith is a legendary figure. The ancients thought he had magical powers because he was master of fire and iron. In Roman mythology, Vulcan was the patron of blacksmiths. He used volcanoes as forges. At the anvil, the smith shapes the shoes carefully for the feet of a growing horse. While the metal is still soft, he must use a wooden mallet. After it cools, he will switch to a hammer of steel. What started as a bar of steel is fast becoming a horseshoe. The smith, a mighty man is he. Thoroughbreds who look promising, about one out of three, make the trip from farm to track in vans. A horseshoer is waiting for them to inspect their feet. Life at the track is exciting to a new arrival. So much is going on. What a high-strung thoroughbred needs is the reassuring presence of old pals. Goats are popular, and ponies, too, have a gentling effect. Whoa, here's a horse who could use a stable full of pets. During inspection, the shoer must watch for hoofs grown too long, foot injuries, shoes worn thin, and shoes loosened by kicking the sides of the van. A horse is usually excitable on arriving at a new location. He becomes unmanageable if he senses the slightest fear. He responds favorably to a confident horseshoer. Complete mastery of a situation is the mark of the qualified horseshoer. Mastery and alertness to any condition 
that needs correcting. Headquarters for the shoers at the track is the blacksmith shop. Here they can go about the business of preparing shoes for muddy tracks and still be available when needed. A horse needs shoeing. This is top priority. Without a shoer to care for his feet, the fastest thoroughbred could not go to the post. As trainers say, no foot, no horse. For shoers who move from track to track, a car means transportation and serves too as a tool bin on wheels. In his trunk, he carries his equipment and shoes of every size, all within easy reach. The thoroughbred lifts his foot. He has learned that no man is a shoer unless he loves horses. He has learned, too, that shoeing is good for him and in no way painful. The first step is removal of the old shoes and nails. At the back of a horse's hoof is a shock absorber called the frog. Dead tissue must be trimmed away, leaving only healthy frog in contact with the ground. A racehorse's legs are thin, and his feet small in proportion to his powerful, deep-chested body. Healthy, cushioning tissue is essential to protect legs from jolts and jars when a thousand-pound thoroughbred races down the stretch. The wall of a horse's foot is a crust upon which the horseshoe sits. The wall is made of a horn-like substance, like a person's fingernails. And like fingernails, it must be trimmed regularly. In a young horse, it grows at the rate of about three inches a year. The sole is also horn. The shoer must avoid trimming so deep that the sole becomes sensitive. The shoes used at the track are called racing plates. They come in sizes four, five, six, and seven. Native Dancer wore size six. The plates are made of aluminum for lightness. In ancient Rome, Nero's horses were shod with shoes of silver, his wife's horses with gold. The first horseshoes were probably a kind of leather boot, while Mongols once shod their steeds with a soft part of reindeer horns. But for a fast six furlongs or a grueling mile and three sixteenths, the thoroughbred of today will wear aluminum, fitted with care and patience by a journeyman horseshoer. It is not an easy matter to qualify as a shoer. A man must serve three years as an apprentice. He can become a half-book floorman when he's able to shoe horses with factory-made shoes. To become a journeyman, he must pass a stringent examination before a board of five. Three members from his own local, two from an out-of-town local. He must show knowledge of blacksmithing, of the anatomy of a horse's hoof, of the principles of corrective shoeing. And he must shoe a horse while the board watches. Because of the great responsibility, standards are kept high. The shoer drives the nails out the sides of the hoof wall, never straight in where they might touch sensitive tissue. The ends of the nails must be clipped off and filed down until they're smooth. During a race meet, the shoer is a busy man. He works in the blacksmith shop and shoes six or seven horses a day. He has no time to watch as they race by a hundred yards away. But over 30 million Americans a year do find time to watch the races. Some like horses, some just like to bet on horses. As Mark Twain said, it's the difference of opinion that makes horse racing.
parade in the paddock means post time is almost here. I got my money on the bobtail nag. Somebody bet on the bay. Patrol judges head for their posts. The crowd waits anxiously. No. Way up in the middle of the track, Carter toward the outside, what's behind and Q Admiral. Moving along the inside, the bold purple. As they straighten out, bold purple getting the lead, what's behind is second. Orbit's top is up along the inside, getting third. Carter is fourth, Q Admiral fifth. National Gallery along the inside, sixth and King Lee Jim. Leaving the three-quarter pole, and it's bold purple leading by the Orbit's top is second. Two lengths, what's behind is third. Carter is fifth. National Gallery fifth. King Lee James. Thoroughbred down the stretch, thunder back a tribute to the organized members of the International Union of Journeymen Horseshoers of the United States and Canada, AFL CIO. Americans at work for you. Presented as a public service by the AFL-CIO. Next week, another story of Americans at work. Americans whose skill and effort help keep our country great and strong. <laughs>